In today's video, we're going to talk about how being overweight affects your osteoarthritis, because actually there's far more to it than just that extra mechanical load. And we do know that losing weight can be really difficult, so do make sure you stay tuned until the very end of the video, as I'll be telling you how you can improve your osteoarthritis symptoms without losing any weight at all. And we're gonna start right now. Now we do know that being overweight is likely to increase the pain and the symptoms that we get if we have osteoarthritis. But whereas before we thought it was purely down to the fact that there was this extra mechanical load stressing the joint, we now know there is far more to it than that and that is what we're going to discuss in today's video. That said, we definitely do still think that being overweight does put extra mechanical stress through the joint. And that probably explains partly why the most common joints to get arthritis in tend to be your weight-bearing joints like your knees and your hips. Now, two-thirds of adults with osteoarthritis are either overweight or obese. Yet only 50% of people that see a healthcare professional about their osteoarthritis get advice about weight loss. Which is a shame because if we do have that chat with a healthcare professional, you're up to four times more likely to do something about it. So that means it's a very important discussion for us to have with you and for you to have with us. If you're not sure whether you're overweight or how much you should be trying to lose, then I have popped a link in the description below the video to a BMI calculator. And what this does is takes into consideration your age, your weight, your height, your physical activity levels and your ethnicity and produces a figure based on these factors. That will give you an idea of what weight you should be and how much you should be thinking about trying to lose. So why is it important? Well, a 2013 study suggested that by losing 10% of your body weight, you could decrease your osteoarthritic symptoms by up to 50%, which is a lot more than you get with medication. And that for every one pound of body weight lost, that decreases the pressure going through your knees by up to four pounds. Now, I did mention earlier that there's far more to being overweight than just that extra mechanical stress. And it comes down to chemical reactions and metabolism. All of the time there are many different funky chemical and metabolic reactions taking place throughout our body to try and keep us alive and to try and keep us moving. And what these reactions are trying to do is break down the food or the fuel that we put in our bodies to turn into energy. Which is brilliant because it means we can be physically active, we can run away in threatening situations, and we can also store energy in times of food deprivation. But in Western countries, we are very rarely deprived of food and we don't need to be that physically active. So what happens is we tend to excessively store nutrients and this messes up these metabolic pathways. Now these processes are exceptionally complex and if you would like some extra boffin level knowledge then there is a link in the description below to a 2018 paper that does discuss obesity, metabolic syndrome and musculoskeletal disease with particular reference to osteoarthritis where it goes into each process individually and breaks things down. For the purpose of this video I'm going to try and keep the explanations fairly simple. So messing around with metabolic pathways leads to metabolic dysfunction. And if this process goes on, ultimately metabolic syndrome. And there has been quite a lot of research with regards to how metabolic syndrome affects other conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure and cholesterol and cardiovascular disease. But at the moment, there's still a gap in the literature when it comes to musculoskeletal conditions and osteoarthritis. The current thought process is that we know being overweight leads to an increase in adipose tissue. And adipose tissue is the fatty tissue that we have in our body. And if we do have excess fatty tissue in our body, these chemical and metabolic reactions that take place lead to chronic low level inflammation. And it is this chronic low level inflammation that is not good news for our bone, muscle and joint health. Muscle size and strength is a key predictor in long-term health. And we know that muscles are constantly repairing and remodeling themselves. 
but that does mean they are susceptible to inflammation. And we know that being overweight or obese increases the intramuscular lipids that we have in our system. That just means we've got more fatty cells in our muscles. And this can lead to muscle dysfunction, which in turn is a risk factor for conditions such as tendinopathies, osteoporosis, and arthritis. Sarcopenic obesity refers to the fact that as we get larger, our muscles get weaker, which not only leads to a decrease in physical function, it also leads to weight gain and a huge eight to 11 fold increase in the chance of having three or more physical disabilities. This low level inflammation not only messes with our muscles, it also messes with our bones and cartilage. Now it's a common misconception when it comes to osteoarthritis that it is an irreversible process that inevitably is going to get worse. And I won't beat around the bush, that is just not true. Muscles, tendons, bones and cartilage all have the ability to regenerate and repair albeit at slightly different rates. And this rate of repair does slow down slightly as we get older. But one thing that will slow it down further, if not stop it completely, is this chronic low level inflammation. And that is why, if you can, it is a good idea to try and incorporate weight loss as part of your osteoarthritis management plan to try and reduce some of this chronic low level inflammation. And not only is this going to help with your arthritis, it's also going to help reduce the risk of getting other nasty health conditions that we don't really want, like high blood pressure and high cholesterol, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and also cancer as well. On a slightly more positive note, I did say at the beginning of the video, if you stay tuned until the end, I will tell you how you can improve your arthritis symptoms without losing any weight at all. So I'm going to point you in the direction of a 2013 study that looked at three different groups of people over an 18 month period. There's a link to the study in the description below the video. They all had osteoarthritis and group one completed a weight loss program, group two completed an exercise program and group three completed both. And then at the end of the 18 months, they looked at their pain, function and mobility. And what they found was that all three groups saw improvements in their pain, their function and their mobility. Now group three, the group that did do exercise and weight loss combined, did do better than the other two groups. However, group two, the group that just focused on exercise without weight loss, still saw significant improvements in their function, their pain and their mobility. What we can take from this is that if you do want to absolutely optimize the chance of your symptoms improving, then try both. Having said that, we know that weight loss is really hard. If you're watching this, you may be trying now, or you may have tried multiple times in the past. And if this is a struggle for you, you can take some reassurance from the fact that you can still see an improvement in your arthritic symptoms with exercise alone. If weight loss is something that you've struggled with in the past and you have any tips or advice for any of the viewers watching, then please do pop a comment below the video and let's help each other out. Thank you very much for watching. There are some useful links in the description below the video. And if you are new to the channel, then please do hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time I release a new video, which I do every single week. And if you have enjoyed the video, please do give us a thumbs up to show your appreciation. If you have enjoyed this video, you may also like the video that I have put together on the different factors that affect pain if you have arthritis. And there is a whole playlist on the channel to help you manage your arthritis better at home. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, I will see you again very soon.